doubts I can. It's just, um, does everything come together on, on that, on that day? And, um, it's my first time running Western and my first time running a race over 100k too, so there's this unknown, unknown territory, so I don't Nike trail athlete Matt Daniels and we're going to talk a little bit about my story from sub 4 to western states. My story started at a pretty young age. I started running when I was 11 years old and um, I had you know quite a career on, on the track in, in junior high and middle school and in high school and that sort of thing but where it really began was um, when I ran sub 4 minute mile at Adams State while I was in college. The weekend I ran sub four was a crazy weekend. I initially was going into the meet uh, planning to run a 5K. I was doing 10K training, getting ready for outdoors, and so I scheduled to run a 5K at uh, the Husky Invite in Seattle and got into a good heat and was ready to run about 13.30 and got into a race that wasn't paced very well and was a little let down with the time. I think I ran something around 13.50 or 14 flat. My coach made a decision to uh, had me run in a mile the next day in the all comers meet. Um, so we changed the plane tickets and got ready to run a mile the next morning. And so had you know less than 24 hours rest. And we were waking up from a, a text from my coach that morning saying, this day's as good as any. Uh, what he meant by that was like, you know, this is your time to shine, time to break four minutes in a mile. And so that got me a little bit pumped up. And uh, yeah, the race was phenomenal. It was perfectly paced and I uh, ended up second place, but was able to run 3.59 and uh, have a good weekend out of it. So after breaking four minutes in the mile my senior year, um, you know, I was left with the decision on what was I going to do post-collegiately. And so uh, it's a lot of what brought me out to Boulder, um, was trying to find the right, the right post-collegiate group to train, train for and, you know, trying to make a decision on if I was going to stay on the track or get on the roads and really the idea of trail racing at the time had never crossed my mind. So yeah, I ended up running um, Olympic Trials Marathon Qualifier and, and uh, training for the trials and running that and didn't go so well. It was a pretty rough weekend and so, um, you know, I, I had a few months after that race to really sit back and think about what I was going to do with my life. Uh, that's when I kind of decided to, to get more into trail running and um, remember, you know, with uh, Hayden Hawks and Andy Wacker uh, convincing me to sign up for the USA Mountain Running Champs and we all went out there and uh, ended up qualifying from the first world team and that's kind of what kickstarted me on the trails. So. My name is David Roach. I am a running coach, some work all play running. I am Matt's coach and started coaching him over a year ago, so early 2018. The main thing that we had to learn early on was that it's okay to slow down, workouts should not be punishing. Um, we want things to be really focused on building up over time rather than tearing down. Um, so that's really what we've been doing in the last, uh, last year is 
Like, he's so talented, we don't need to go destroy ourselves every day. Yeah, going under four minutes in the mile is, you know, only a few thousand people have done it in human history. It shows a certain amount of, of physical talent mixed with mental toughness that puts you in rarefied air. And, you know, you, you combine those things and you can do anything, like not just in running, in almost anything in life. And I think that's one of the coolest things about Matt's journey is, yeah, he has these skills, but he works his butt off for it. For me, it's just, it all started from the first day I started running. So um, when, when I started running the mile when I was 11 years old, you know, that's always, that's always been a goal of mine was one day you want to be one of those guys that breaks four minutes in the mile. There's only been a few thousand people in the world to do it. And I think at the time I was number 300 and something in the U.S. to do it. And um, yeah, I think, you know, it's a lot of days of consistent training day in and day out and just kind of... Um, you know, enjoying the process and uh, keeping that goal in mind and not really letting go of that. Four Minute Mile is not something that happens just through, like, talent. Four Minute Mile is something that happens through absolutely understanding why you're doing what you're doing and being willing to be a puddle on the track after. You know, we all have those moments where every ounce of our being is like, I don't want to do this anymore. Most of us can't push through that. Um, and you know, going sub four shows, you can see that wall, then break through that wall. When we approached this year, Western States was not the goal. Um, you know, I had a very strong feeling he was gonna get a golden ticket, like I know how fit he is, and I, I've seen his training, but you know, he's, he's not quite at the point, I think, where Western States, like winning, is the is the goal you know the the sacrifices he'd have to make in training for his long-term growth at this stage are probably too great so you know as we approach this we we're like look we're doing these races the only goal of black canyon was to finish i'm like i don't at this point i don't really care where you finish just promise me that no matter what happens when the stuff hits the fan like we'll walk we'll crawl to the finish if we have to especially given some of matt's background like before before he started joined coaching with some unlucky results at ultras um and you know the thing with matt is like for him just finishing turned into i think one of the better races we've seen in a long time um and yeah as that applies to 100 miles i don't think anyone knows until they until they get to mile 90 95 if you're jim walmsley or whatever like it it's just a different beast. And how the physiology responds at that stage is anyone's guess. But there's one thing about Matt that I do know is that his psychology will be ready to rock. Um, so with Western States, we're not gonna, we're not gonna sell out in training. You know, We're not gonna take these, these long-term risks. Like what, what I was telling Matt the other day is that you know, we could put all of our chips on the table right now and try to maximize what happens in June. Um, but what I'd much rather is, you know, joyride this year a little bit, have fun in training, go there, compete, be ready, fight, but mainly be thinking about like Western States 2020, 2021. Like, you know, this year I haven't run a race where I haven't set a course record. And so there's kind of this like, this feeling of like, I, I wanna go out and, and do what I'm capable of, but I also, in the back of my head, I'm a little cautious on saying that because I think, you know, there's a lot more that goes into the distance. But the thing with ultra marathons is that there are so many variables on race day that you never know how it's all gonna interact. Like, you, it's essentially chaos theory. You've got non-linear interactions of thousands of variables, many of which we don't even know, even as a coach that's done this forever. Like, you just don't know. And so I didn't know what was gonna happen. I mean, Bandera, he was, ha he was gonna be having one of the best races he's had. He was gonna crush that and then got unlucky with a fall. And so after that race on the plane flight back, he text messaged me and said, okay, well, what, you know, what's next? And I was like, well, let's use this fitness. This turns into a great long run as much as it sucks that this happened in, at Bandera. Credit to him because he was the one that had the courage to say, okay, I'm willing to put myself out there at Black Canyon. That wasn't my suggestion. You know, that's, that's a big step after you've had this rough thing, you're stepping back in this, 
in a pressure cooker, you know, with a lot of people watching. And he went in, and honestly, I've never seen him more at peace before that race. He went in just comfortable with himself, with his fitness, with just who he was as a person. And we talked on the phone before the race, and I think like the conclusion of it was that he just loves what he's doing. And like when I heard that, I was like, oh, yeah, watch out world, this is gonna be scary. And his splits at the end of that race were mind-blowing. Like, you know, exceeded what I expected based on training alone, which is not something that you see very often. And that's that moment where I was like, well, maybe his physiology isn't just like geared towards the four-minute mile. Maybe the four-minute mile was almost a pleasant byproduct of his ultra physiology that has been lurking there all along. And. Yeah, as that applies to 100 miles, I don't think anyone knows until they until they get to mile 90, 95, if you're Jim Walmsley or whatever. Like, it, it's just a different beast. And how the physiology responds at that stage is anyone's guess. I think the better question is, what does Western States mean to me? Um, and that that kind of holds a place in my heart. Like, it, you know, it's a sacred race, and it's something I talked about when I first got into the sport of ultra running, it's something I wanted to do and have success at, and now it's finally happening, and um, it means a lot to be able to toe the line and be running the race, and um, I guess we'll, you know, we'll take it one mile at a time and see how it goes. Sub Florida States, it's an interesting experiment. Welcome to ultrarunnerpodcast.com and a new episode. My name is Eric Schranz, and today we'll be talking with the guy I, now I know, I know, we've said it before, but, but here, now maybe this is the fastest guy to ever line up at Western States, okay? I don't know anybody who's run a sub four at West, um, you know, going into Western, but, but more important than that is maybe there is, maybe there's somebody who ran a 356 20 years ago when they were in college. And that that doesn't that, you know that doesn't mean that much. That's really cool. But the fact that Matt has that time on his legs and on his training just like two years ago, three years ago, whenever that was, is certainly makes it makes it interesting. It's hard. To, I mean, it's hard to extrapolate to say well he's you know three seconds faster in a mile than than other guys, and somehow that means he's going to do well in a hundred mile trail race. You can't do that. But in terms of of just interesting and how's it going to how's that leg speed and that that speed specific training that he probably still has in his body will work out at western is going to be is going to be fascinating i mean it's incredible that there's a guy and he didn't even run that sub four minute mile that long ago i mean it was within the last couple of years so the fact that he's transitioning from being a fast super fast track guy to running 100 miles is just inspiring to me i can't wait to see how he does he could have an awesome day and bust the world open he could also just crash and burn, and it'd be another footnote on Western States history. <laughs> I'm Joshua Stevens. I'm the crew chief for Matt Daniels here at Western States. If we do our job uh, and we create conditions where Matt is focused solely on executing his very best race, he has the capacity to do something extraordinarily uh, impressive here. I'm Hayden Hawks. Uh, I'll be pacing Matt Daniels tomorrow at Western States from the river to the finish line. Really excited to be out here at Western States. I think the world of ultra running is going to have the opportunity to see a very special race tomorrow. Try and wean off the caffeine in the heat Okay. when it's hot. Because one thing caffeine does is it, it does play a role in increasing heart rate and heat does that too. There's a lot going on the day yeah, before a big race, and uh, yeah, I've just been uh, trying to yeah, keep it relaxed the, um, and uh, rest when I can. <laughs> Recently, he was really fast. 
I mean, he is fast right now. It's not, oh yeah, 20 years ago, I ran such and such a time on the track. No, I just ran. What number you? He earned a golden ticket by winning the Black Canyon 100K in February. I believe he's the first competitor in Western States history to have a sub four minute mile to his credit. From Boulder, Colorado, Matt Daniels. I sleep by 8.30 and I think I woke up once. 8.30 to 3. I don't know how many hours I'm I don't stress over races. <laughs> Think about all that, dude. Think about those uh, Western State training days yeah. when you're out there. Good days. Everything you guys. <laughs> and then this weekend, it's been a lot. So, all right. Yeah, sorry. It's all right, buddy. <laughs> uh, hey, thank you yeah. for for getting us here. <laughs> this is a selfish sport, awesome. and you guys have really stepped it up and been awesome. So. It's a team Enjoy. this weekend, buddy. I love you. Love you too. Yeah, we did. We're proud of you. Thanks. You just have fun and just run your race. And however it comes out is how it comes out. Yep. All right.
want to see somebody next. Hold on, I'll tell you. Uh, you're going to see us at Michigan Bluff that's going to be two and a half hours back. Your next aid station, though, is uh, just in five, okay? I'm going in now, man. I took a nasty spoon. And so bad. and Dusty. Uh, got a little dusty, but he's doing doing great. Uh, no bleeding or anything. Um, I think uh, we just need to keep nutrition going in him um, and make sure he has legs going into Forest Hill. Uh, he's made up time on second place. Um, he's currently in third place. Uh, looking good. And so, yeah, I think uh, everything's just playing out how we want it to play out. Welcome, Matt. Good luck, man. Um, I don't know. I can't hold anything down. You want some ham? I've been just eating at the AC. Want to come with us? Just keep throwing things up. You want to try ham? Yeah, I'll just have a slice. Okay. You want a potato? You're gonna be okay? You want your dance? It's 100 miles. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna make it? <laughs> that was the toughest part of the course, so. Okay. Yeah, that's fun too. Is that other guy come there? No, you're good. I think it's Stephen Krish behind me. They're moving, man. Yeah, they are. You're doing good. You're good. You're doing good, so cool. Thanks. Yep.
job, man. Something though, Matt. Eat, eat some ham and yeah. potato, the potato pancakes. Hamstring? Here, give me that squirrel's nut butter. You want a sandwich? <laughs> you got it. You need your hamstrings, bro? Yeah. 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 You're good, you're right. Yeah, I know. I've had you. I'm going to run 60 miles just for this. Alright, let's get some salsa. You guys are too much. <laughs> so, the next section is almost oh, yeah. exactly like Bear Canyon. Okay. So, you know, you just relax. Yeah. Take your time. The rest of the course is like, it's going to have some ups and downs, but you're good. So. Yeah. Okay. Good? We got a new, right. yeah, yeah, new soap. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's Perfect. on it. And just take your time at aid station. Yeah. You're all good to go. No rush. The thing about it, dude, is they got they got at least four minutes in here. Five minutes. Yeah. And also, yeah. you know, yeah. they're gonna come. Just, coming. You're going with them. Yeah. It's gonna be fun. Yeah. This is your section, dude. This is where you can This is your All right. No, there's only there's only one of the three things. Um, I think he's looking good. Yeah. Um, I came in. He came into Forest Hill, um, looking really solid. Um, wasn't complaining about anything. Had a big smile on his face. Um, we were running on the flat coming into Forest Hill, and he was still moving really well. Had some good leg turnover. And this next section of the course is. I mean, that's his bread and butter, and that's what he's really good at is the rolling stuff and the downhill. And so I think uh, if, you know, Josh is taking him right now down to the river, I'll take him from the river to the finish. I think if we can just keep him eating and keep him happy, and happy uh, hopefully he can secure that podium spot. When we get to the, where the when we get to the friggin' runnable stuff, we gotta run. Yeah. And that's the thing is we can't. It's flowy. You got it. Ready? Oh shit! Man. Try to jog maybe just a tad bit, even if it's just like this. <coughs> we go.
be done. 100 miles a long way. <laughs> no, I'm excited. This has been awesome. It was a sick experiment, but it turned about, out about as well as it could. Um, when I saw him at Forest Hill, I knew he was going to be going into a world that really, you know, the only way to experience it is to experience it, or to know it is to experience it. And um, he, from what I heard, went through some of the lowest lows you could ever imagine. And, you know, he had the courage to face that moment and fight back. And, and now I'm, <laughs> I'm, like, almost crying a little bit, so I'll try to try to keep it together. <laughs> I mean, Megan and I were just like, well, yeah. we're just so happy. Even, you know, at this point, you can walk and be like, have a great day. Before it's still the river, then, I thought I was dying. Your spirit you know, got just, so fast. Yeah, I just had another, like, I don't know, I got on that the type of like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like, floaty. Which cool. <laughs> yeah. like, I was, I'm running, I gotta run with people. That, oh my god, seriously. Yeah. We came out of Forest Hills. Uh, Tom Evans was, was right behind us. Two miles in, Matt smashed his toe. Felt like he'd lost his toenail. He had to stop, uh, pull off his shoe. Toe was jacked up. Tom passed us. Matt put the shoe back on, fought, fought. The next two miles were hard, and then he just started throwing it down. I mean, it was extraordinary to watch how tough he was and how hard he fought. When we got him to Hayden, I mean, those guys had, they were, you know, Mark was just about a minute or so behind. You saw where he finished. Yeah, it was incredible, man. I mean, you know, Matt <coughs> had a bee sting today. He fell a couple times. He had his toe, you know, jammed and everything. And he still fought back. You know, uh, we got to the top of the hill after the Rocky Chucky River there. And Get a Menace actually had caught in us. Matt wasn't feeling very good. After that, he just rallied. I mean, he just kept crushing it down the downhills. I mean, there were some downhills where we were dropping down in the six minute, six minute, six right. minute miles. Um, and he just kept going and going and going. And, and I just told him, I said, hey, man, look forward. You know, let me let me do the looking around and make sure people aren't coming. You just look forward and keep pushing and keep pushing. You know, and me and Matt, we'd ran that course like three times when we did our training camp here. So we were super familiar with the trail, super familiar with the landmarks. It was just an incredible race. I mean, it was so cool because as we passed everybody, everybody would be like, go, Matt, go, Matt. And I'm like, 
how does everybody know your name here? But that's what's cool about Western States. I mean, it's it's a it's a family. You know, it's an incredible event, and uh, we're just so happy for Matt. And it was an amazing day. Extraordinary. But mostly, I mean, it was the like encouragement from people and just kind of um, knowing that I'm, I was in the top ten, I'm going to be able to come back next year as long as I hold it together. So there's a little bit of motivation. Especially with the, how good the top three guys ran, I was happy to be be where I was. Yeah, I mean I'm a competitive guy, and not, you know next year I'm gonna come back and run really fast and do really well. But it's 100 miles. <laughs> it was deceivingly hard. Like you get rocking on some downhills and some flatter sections, and then you just hit these steep climbs that are you know like kind of rocky or washed out, and they really break your rhythm and. Well, I did probably more hiking than I've ever done in my life today. <laughs> I feel like I had it down. <laughs> it was kind of the game plan today. It was to just stay within yourself and, but, you know, I power hiked as much as I could and got my heart rate down and then ran fast when I could. Probably what I was most proud of was from um, the river to the finish. So relieved and excited and happy and proud of him. He'll be more proud and excited and happy for him and all that he's accomplished. He's crazy. <laughs> but I'm proud of him. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Wow, what a, what a special day, what a historic day. We had for the first time the top 10 finishers finishing in under 16 hours. in the time of 1521, Matt Daniel. The cool part of it was looking to my left and right and seeing the people I was standing with. Um, sharing a stage with guys like Hazen and Jim and Claire and, you know, everybody. It was just uh, Jeff Browning, like, surreal. You know, it was something you couldn't imagine a, a year ago. You can ask anybody, it's a sub-form in a miler, and 
you can tell in that, like, I mean, they can look at what, I don't know what I average, what pace, and they'll probably laugh at it, but they need to come out here and experience this shit, because it's another, another realm. <laughs> I mean, I worked a long time for sub four, but, um, in terms of, like, aerobically, this was easier, but in terms of, like, everything you go through, like, I mean, this was the hardest thing I've ever done. The whole weekend. Check out the mustache. Oh yeah, let's get a close up, man. Come here. Oh yeah. <laughs> nice. Sitting here at the pack up packet pickup with Mr. Josh Stevens here. Look at him. Look at those moves, man. Here at the beautiful Squaw Valley Resort. There's Rob, the man behind the camera. Now I'm the man behind the camera. New career. Screw running, dude. This is this is the life. Yeah. Two more Red Bulls. <laughs> I want two more Red Bulls for Hayden. Hey, give me that squirrel's nut, buddy. Hey, give me that squirrel's nut, buddy. Oh, I was just happy I was able to give Matt a nice foot massage. Um, I yeah, want to be a patient. I rubbed squirrel's nut butter all over his feet and I just kept rubbing, dude. Like, I, I didn't want to stop. And finally, Matt was like, dude, stop rubbing my feet. Put my shoe on. And That's I was like, oh, oh, I'm sorry, dude. I just love feet, you know? Like, like that dude off Mr. Deeds who just loves feet. He's always asking people to rub their feet. That was me, dude. Got caught in that moment there. But no, I had a good time. You know, it was just a great, great experience. And, uh, we, uh, we, I think we could have. Do you have yeah, a little bit to live till you rub Matt's buckets? Oh, dude, those bunions. Dude, <laughs> I was gonna say, I mean, did you put enough on? Like, what was. Hey, give me that squirrel's nut, buddy. 